Greetings, greetings, greetings. It's exciting to be back again and to share some more of the love of God with you. I'm Teddy Marshall, pastor and founder of Word Fellowship Ministries. You can get more information about me and the ministry at word, www.wordfm.net. Um, I want to get right into the word today. This is something that the Lord woke me up this morning. It was just on my heart and it's just um, an excitement in my heart. And I'm going to start with the word because that's, that's our foundation. That's our, always our starting point. Not just for study, but for life. The word of God is our foundation. And I'm going to start with um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. And uh, we're used to these verses, this, this portion of scripture being talked about or spoken at weddings. And it's about love and what love is and what it does. And uh, it, it's to encourage the newlyweds in their new endeavor <laughs> as husband and wife. But what the Lord put on my heart this morning is this, there's another aspect to this. So I'm going to start. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. To me, what I saw, and this is what the, the, the perspective that the Lord gave to me this morning regarding these verses, is that he's telling us through this, yes, for the newlyweds, yes. But what he's really telling us, this is how I love you. This is the way I love you. This is how love goes. He's, he loves us with an, with an everlasting love. He's kind. He suffers long. He is so patient with us. When you think about the different things where any human being would have given up on us a long time ago. But God says, I still love you. It's not, it's not rude. He's not rude. He's not going to force us to do the right thing. He presents it. And in his presenting, it's so cool. There's a verse that says, um, uh, about life and death and then even he even in his love even tells us choose life that's so cool to me it's like okay yep 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 you you can make your own choices and the decision is yours but let me tell you to, here, here choose this one choose life and in essence he's saying choose me when we think about the things of God a lot of times what religion will do was will have us to think about God in terms of a uh, a slew of thou shalt nots and don't do that and make us feel like we're giving up something. But relationship with God lets us know life begins with him. Once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, a whole new way of living is presented to us, is available to us, and God is the one that does it. And through his love, that's how we accomplish things. When we understand, like as, as these verses are talking here, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, and it's talking about what love is and how it is and how it behaves. It's not envious. So we're not cutting each other's throats and stuff like that. God is saying, no, that's not how I love. And as my child, now through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the redemption from the enemy, uh, uh, from the devil's uh, jurisdiction unto God now by, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We too are able to love in that way, in that godly way. A lot of times we hear, uh, get to know God and press in. And, and I remember when I first started really coming into um, uh, going to church and reading the word. And I remember seeing the different people in church and they're, um, you know, and they're raising their hands and they're celebrating and they're worshiping. And I'm like, man, what is that? How do you do that? And then I'm like, God, I, there's got to be something else to this. Because I know these people aren't just coming up with this on their own. So I asked a few people in this, this season, saints, and I said, well, you know, tell me, what, what is about this God relationship with him? And I said, just press in. And I kept hearing about press in. I'm like, oh, okay. But how do you do that? 
How do you press in? How do you come to trust somebody and love somebody to that degree where you're raising your hands and worshiping and tears are streaming and, and you're just overcome with this, this fullness? There's really no other way to express it. It's a fullness. You can't describe it in any other kind of way, really. But um, I, I needed to know about this pressing in thing. And little by little, God, by the Holy Spirit, started leading me in that way. Just kind of put it on my heart to read a particular verse. And, and if I didn't understand it, I was just like, man, I don't really get this. And it was almost like I could tell, since God, the Holy Spirit saying, tapping me on the shoulder, just ask me. So that's what I did. Lord, tell me about this love. Tell me, how do I, how do I love properly? Because in the natural, we throw love around. And we, we, we claim we love people, but when we think about it, really, there's so much more to this love. There's so much more um, than just reading it on the page. And God wants us to know this is how you do it. God is saying, I am love. So come to me, find out about me. Find out about, about me who is love and let me show you how to love properly and appropriately. Let me show you what love really is. Let me show you how important you are to me. And let's go from there. In uh, 1 John chapter 4, 16, he tells us, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. So that's how we do it. We find out who he is, get into the word, find out, ask him, Lord, I want to know this. I want to know you. I want to get to that place where it's just like I'm not shaking anymore to the core. We'll have our moments because everything God gives us is like on a grand scale. But that's just proof that we need him even more. But it's not where the enemy can come in and, and, and knock us around and, and nope. Not when we're full and we know and we're grounded in the love of God because we know he's there with us. So with all this is saying to me, God loves me to my core. And that's what I want to share with you today. God loves you to your core. Mistakes, errors, sin, God loves you. And is this message giving you license to sin? No. Because when you come into the fullness of God's love and you realize the depth of that, you're not going to want to sin. Because you, 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 you appreciate him and you want to do right by him. And then you're so full, you want to share with others. So you're not going to cheat. You're not going to lie. You're not going to do all those sh thou shalt nots. Because the love of God is rooted in you. That's God himself. That's all I have for you today. Just wanted to share a little more from my, of, from my heart of the love of God. God bless.